Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 18, no, Middle Discourses 17 uh, by Jungle Thickets. Now, in this discourse, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can check the discourse, read it uh, fully, so you will get the insights at your end. Basically, in this discourse, Buddha is advising monks who go in the forest to meditate that if the meditating in the forests is not helping you in your mindfulness practice, then leave that place, right? So, so basically, Buddha is giving like examples that, you know, if you are, a, so there are two things. One is your mindfulness practice and the uh, uh, necessity, necessities, uh, whether you are getting the necessities in place. So, Buddha is saying that if, if you are getting your mindfulness deeper when you go in a seclusion, right? Even if the necessity, necessities are not that much, that means you do not get the proper necessity and all, you can continue, you can keep on practicing there. But if your mindfulness is not getting established, whether there be the necessities that you receive are good or whether you don't receive the necessities, you should try to leave that place. So what Buddha is trying to say here is the important thing is the necessity, is the mindfulness. See, it's like, I leave uh, my regular uh, 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 lay life and go into a forest to meditate. So Buddha is saying that your primary purpose is meditation, deep meditation, deep mindfulness to attain liberation. What generally happens is that, you know, we just get into the comfort zone. For example, uh, I go in a forest or in a village where there is a lot of, uh, you know, comfort is given and all, you know, people respect me and everything. So I stay in that village or stay in that place. Even though my mindfulness is not getting developed, I would stay in that place. But Buddha said that approach is wrong. You have to keep evaluating whether my practice is developing or not. And accordingly, then you decide, you know, uh, whether to continue. If the necessities are, if practice is developing, then whether necessities are good or bad, just you continue, continue. If mindfulness is not developing, then whether or not you have, if you don't have necessities, then anyways, you should move. But even if you have necessities and comforts, then also you should consider moving, right? So first Buddha, what is what Buddha is trying in this uh, discourse, he is giving the example of a mendicant and, and comparing vis-a-vis -vis the necessities. Then <coughs> Buddha comes into this point of that, that take the case of a mendicant who lives supported by a village, town, city, country or individual, right? So, so, so first is Buddha is talking about the forest, right? Now, as a lay people, forest thing is doesn't you know resonate with us because we are lay people. But here, the second you know uh, section of this discourse, Buddha is talking about where a mendicant is supported by a village, town, city, country, and individual. So here again, Buddha is basically uh, there are like four situations, right? So first situation is mindfulness is getting established, no, and necessity is getting met, no. So course of action that Buddha recommends is that leave that person or village or that place, any time of the day or night without taking leave, they should not follow them. That means you should not follow that person or place because it is not helping you in any way. Neither your necessities are getting met, nor your mindfulness is getting established. Second is situation where mindfulness is not getting established, necessities are getting met. Right. So here Buddha says after appraisal, after due thinking, so in the first situation there was no thinking that is required. Neither mindfulness was getting established, nor the necessities were getting met. In the second situation, necessities are getting met. So after appraisal, leave that person having taken leave. That means go and take leave of that person who is maintaining you because he is spending on you for your necessities. Go have a, it's like a courteous thing to take leave from that person and do not follow that person, right? Third situation is where mindfulness is getting established, but necessities is not getting met. So here Buddha is saying, after a due appraisal, follow that person. They should not leave. That means continue following that person because establishment of mindfulness is more important. Fourth is where mindfulness is getting established and necessities are also getting met. There Buddha is saying, follow that person for the rest of their life. They should not leave them even if sent away. That means even if that person sends them away, you should not leave that person. Right? Who is taking care of your mindfulness also and who is taking care of your necessities also. Don't leave that person, follow them for the rest of the life because both things are getting met. So here what my understanding is, Buddha is, see one thing is, Buddha is also practical that necessities also need to be met, 
right? It's not that we cannot live without necessities. But the main thing Buddha tries to bring here is that the mindfulness practice is more important because that is the whole reason why you would have left a lay life to a, uh, to a life of a punk. So now, since, now even though this kind of a discourse is more kind of a addressed to monks, the the basic uh, the learning that I will have as a as a lay person is that keep evaluating your conditions. See, even if we are in family life, so we cannot like just leave that family leave our family life. But we can within this family life that we are in, we can create conditions for ourselves to deepen our practice of mindfulness. Right. So keep evaluating. Right. Okay. If you cannot meditate in the evening because of the you know family and everything. Start getting early, meditate. Be meditate. Okay, if you are saying that I don't find time to meditate, okay, no problem. As you're going to office, like I remember my times uh, in Mumbai when I, there is a lot of commute that is involved in Mumbai, you know, uh, uh, between our workplace and your home. So I make made it a point that whenever I'm walking, I'm walking the, you know, left, right, left, right, being fully aware of my walking, right? So important is to be resourceful and okay, then you say that okay, I cannot do sutra reading. I cannot, you know, I don't find time. So if you're in a bus or a train or a metro, right, just find some, find time to read the sutras. Or there are a lot of AI uh, kind of enablements that have done, which uh, one uh, okay, uh, like for example, you can read the sutras on through a, a voice, or you can watch YouTube YouTube videos like you know what videos I am making, small small videos where I am sharing. Uh, but the learning essence of Buddha's knowledge, see nothing can definitely replace actual reading of the discourses. But the important thing is that we have to find a way within family life to continue our practice. And our first goal is to become stream enterers, right? What is stream enterers? Who have at least lowered the you know the three the uh, fetters, uh, right? And then I have made a detailed video on the various stages of awakening. So our first task is to become a stream enterer. This is like the first level of awakening and 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 that's our task. We So we have to completely focus our task, keep our practice, the meditation practice, practicing Noble Eightfold Path. And one good thing about Buddha's teaching, what I feel is that, you know, it doesn't require us, you know, to do something very, very different from what our regular life is. So in Buddha's teaching, there are no some rituals or pujas or something that you need to do. Nothing like that or any money that you need to spend anywhere. Buddha just asks us that when you speak, your actions by, by way of body, speech and mind should be pure. Exercise restraint, restraint in your thoughts, restraint in your bodily actions, restraint in your speech. All this practicing mindfulness, sipping up, eating uh, food or drinking uh, tea or walking. These are like, we anyways do that. So, important thing what I take away from this particular discourse is that Keep your mindfulness first. Keep your mindfulness at the center of your life. See, till now there have been many many things that have been center of your life. Uh, at one stage, your job was at the center, the early years of your job. Then, once you get married, then the early years of marriage, your uh, marriage, your life partner is your center of the job. If you are young, then the, your boyfriend or girlfriend is at the center. So those things change and those things are impermanent. If you stick to them, this is what Buddha's teaching is impermanence. Sticking to anything in this samsara is, in, is impermanent. Right? So what we have to focus is that on the teachings. right? And make them, the teachings, the, the kind of a center point in our life. And everything else is around. And see if, if anything needs to be changed so that we can focus on the teachings, focus on the dhamma, practice of the dhamma. Right? So this is my just little kind of a learning. Uh, do uh, share your learning, your insights from this discourse. Do read this discourse fully and share it in the comments. And I would love to read your comments, your your learning from this discourse. Uh, this is it. Um, There's a detailed playlist on middle discourses that is available. You can also check the discourse-wise uh, summaries. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddha. Namo Buddha.